Welcome to LabMins.com. In the multi-tenant environment like public or private cloud, where you might assign a single or even multiple dedicated VLAN to each tenant, you might run into a problem with VLAN shortage as there are only 4,000 VLAN available to give out. VXLAN solved this problem by introducing a new type of VLAN that allows up to 24-bit VLAN ID, which is pretty much equivalent to 16 million VLANs. VXLAN is not compatible with traditional VLAN and requires VXLAN gateway like ASA or CSR1000V for traffic to cross the VLANs. And this is what makes VXLAN suitable in a cloud environment where network isolation is required between tenants. In this video, we will look at how to configure VXLAN or Cisco Nexus 1000V. Here's our lab setup. So if you've been watching our Nexus 1000V video series, you should be very familiar with this lab setup already. So here we have two ESXi server, ESXi1 and ESXi2. We already have a Nexus 1000V installed in layer 3 mode with the VSM Management 0 interface on the VLAN 112 with the IP of dot 16. One thing that we are doing a little differently here is before we have both of the VEMs sitting on the same control VLAN 113 for their VM kernel control interfaces. But here we're going to split out the VM number 2 to a separate VLAN, VLAN 119. And this is so that we can demonstrate how the VXLAN communication works across layer 3 between the two VEMs. And this two VLAN can easily be networks in two different or separate data center. We will be using two web servers as the test machine, Web1 on ESXi1 and Web2 sitting on the ESXi2. When the two hosts is trying to communicate, it will try to send ARP requests in the layer 2 broadcast and that packet will be encapsulated and carried across by the multicast using bidirectional PIM with the group IP 239111. Once two hosts has discovered each other's MAC address, it will start sending traffic and those traffic will be encapsulated and transported inside a unicast UDP packet at the port 8472 and this is basically a MAC frame inside an IP transport. So to the two hosts, they will appear as if they're on the same VLAN, although they're actually not. And towards the end of the video, we will do some packet captures of these VXLAN packet or encapsulation, and we will sit through and go through the packet and kind of review that together and see what it looks like. Okay, so before we get into the configuration of the Nexus 1000V, let's review real quick what we have as far as the multicast configuration on the Switch 1. So let me bring up the console to Switch 1. And we kind of already have all the multicast command configured. So let's take a look at, for example, PIM command. So you can see here we have a PIM bidirectional mode enable. And this is because the kind of application that we're dealing with here is, is many to many, which means anybody can be a source, anybody can pretty much be a receiver. And that's why the bidirectional PIM is recommended. We also have the switch itself configured as a rendezvous point. And let's see. Show IP PIM interface. And here we have our loopback 0, VLAN 113, and 119, which is the VLAN where the VEM control interface is sitting on, enabled with uh, multicast or PIM sparse dense mode. Okay, and we do show IP PIM RP map. You can see just to verify that the switch loopback, which is 172.16.01, is the IP or the rendezvous point. And here bidirectional is designated in the show command as well. Okay, so now that we have the multicast enabled, we can go to our Nexus 1000V and start our configuration. The first thing you want to do is to enable VXLAN feature. And if you do show feature, and you set the feature call segmentation, and by default it's disabled. So we need to enable feature segmentation. Okay, and just like the when you create a traditional VLAN, you have to define a VLAN, but instead of calling a VLAN, the command is bridge domain. And then you can give it a name. So let's come up with something descriptive. We're going to be dealing with or creating a VXLAN 6010. So call it VXLAN 6010. And this is for, say, tenant one. Okay, if you do question mark, there's not a whole lot that you can configure. The first one is group. And this is the multicast group IP that we'll be using to carry multicast or a broadcast traffic between the VEMs. And we said we're going to be using multicast group IP of 239.111. 
dot one dot one dot one. Okay, enter. Another command that we need to do is segment ID, and this is where you specify the VXLAN ID, if you will. And you can see the first or the lowest available ID is 4096, which is pretty much the end or the last uh, VLAN available for the traditional VLAN. So you can see there's no overlapping here. And it goes all the way up to the 16 million. Okay, so our ID is 6010. Enter. The next thing we need to do is to enable VXLAN capability on the VEM layer 3 control interfaces. And to do this, it's very similar to the L3 capability that we enable when we needed the VEM to talk to the VSM across layer 3. So we're going to not necessarily you don't have to use the same VM kernel interface, but in this case, we're just going to use that same interface. So the two port profile that we are dealing with here is VMK control and VMK control 2 for each of the respective VM. So let's do a quick show run port profile. VMK control, make sure I spelled correctly. And you can see already we have capability L3 control. We also have capability L3 service that we have to put in back in the VSG video. But now we need to do capability to enable VXLAN or uh, packet encapsulation between the VM or make the VM support VXLAN is capability VXLAN. Okay, we need to do this on both of our port profile. Next, we need to create a port profile that we will be assigning to the AIN host. And this is the regular VEthernet type port profile. Although it's the default is type VEthernet, we're just going to specify it and we'll call it VM VXLAN 6010 tenant 1. Okay, the majority of the config is pretty much the same when you configure a port profile for an access port. So VMware port group, switch port mode access. Then you go switch port access right here. If you do question mark, you will see two options. With the traditional VLAN, you will specify just the VLAN number here. But for the VXLAN, you use the bridge domain and type this back to the bridge domain that we configured earlier right here. And I'm just going to copy that and then enter. And just do no shut and then state enable. Okay, you can see the new port profile gets published up to the vCenter. And that's pretty much the config that you need to do for the VXLAN. It's pretty straightforward. So now we need to assign now new port profile to our test servers, which is web one and two. So if we go on to under here, let's do it in bulk here with the managed host. We know both web ones are on the ESXi one. Right here, web one. We'll assign it to VXLAN 6010. And the same for the web two. Oh my spell, let's move DB1 there too, so we can another one more host for us to do a test ping on. There you go. Here, finish. Alright, so now let's do some show commands while we, before we start doing some ping tests. So the command is show bridge domain. And you can do just enter. You can see here so far we only have one, which is VXLAN 6010 tenant 1. Uh, three ports being a member right now, which is the three VMs that we just move in, into the port profile. The group IP is 239111 and state is up and Mac learning is enabled. So that's great. Then you can also do brief and that's just a short version that tells, only tells you the status and the member ports. You can also do summary and that's just tell you how many which domain is being configured on the Nexus 1000V. And so far we only, or we only have one. All right, now I'm going to bring up a interface to Web1 right here. It's just our test Linux machine. 
and let's do a test ping to do uh, if config itself has an IP of 10.0.1.32 so we're ping 10.0.1.32 sure it can ping itself 1.33 is the web 2 and you can see we can ping that as well although we're not showing in this diagram here the database one that we also moved it's at dot 34 you can see we can ping that also okay so that's when all the VMs currently all of our VMs are on the same ESXi or same VM now let's move our web 2 I'll do a V motion web 2 over to ESXi 2 okay so just to basically provide a layer 3 separation between host or the VMs do that let me go back to host and cluster and here's our web 2 and just drag it and drop it into our ESXi 2 okay so the migration is completed before I go back and start another ping test let me bring up the switch and now that the web 2 is on the other side of the network or the layer 3 boundaries it's trying to do show IPM route on the switch and our group IP is 239.1.1.1 and you can see already the outgoing interface is VLAN 119 and 113 and you don't really see the source since this is more like a shared tree and not a, a shortest, shortest path a tree so there's not really a one specific source and you can see a designation of bidirectional upstream here as well Okay, so now let's go back to our web1 and let's try to ping dot .33 which is our web2. You can see it's a little pause at first and then the ping goes through. Okay, now that we know that that's working, let's set up a Wireshark so we can do some packet captures and take a look inside the VXLAN encapsulated packet. So here we have a packet capture machine. LM Win 7 non core that's connected also to the Nexus 1000V. Let's go back to our command line here and do show interface virtual right here. Non core is on VETH24, so now we have to set up a monitor session. So, monitor session one. Our source, we're going to be looking at packet through our uplink here, which is the port channel. And because that's the packet that's going to be going back and forth between the VEM. So source is going to be interface port channel 1 and 2. For the destination interface we set our Wireshark machine is at VE24. And we're just going to filter out everything but VLAN 113. So we don't get all the unrelevant captures or packets filter VLAN 113 and finally have to do no shut okay now on the Wireshark machine let me launch the Wireshark actually before I do that since the we, we also want to capture the multicast packet also but now since it's already up or it has to discover each other we might not be seeing it so now what we're going to do we're going to force for the port profile let's take out the type uh, actually we go on to VMK just to kind of reset the VX9 communication a little bit. So under VMK control 2, we're going to take away no capability VXLAN. Okay, and at the same time on the switch, we can clear IPM route as well. And then before I put that back in, I want to launch the capture. Okay, you can see some communication between 113.4 which is the VEM1 to 16 which is uh, 113.16 which is the VSM so that's just the regular VM VSM communication so now I'm going to put back the capability VXLAN okay and then on the web server 1 I'm going to do some more pings you can see that is running now let's go back to our packet capture. Let's 
it run for a while. And let's stop that. Scroll up and let's see if we can locate the first VXLAN packet. Actually, what we can do is just use a display filter here with the IP des equal. All right. You can see just to uh, look at the destination IPs of uh, the multicast address of 239.1.1, we can see some broadcasts. And if you look here at the source, this is coming from the VEM2.119.6. And again, this is the outside or outer packet header. Same to the multicast destination 239.1.1.1. And you can see the UDP header here. You got the destination port of 8472, although the Wireshark recognized that port as OTV port. So I guess this happens to be the same ports that Cisco used for both OTV and VXLAN. And if you look inside the VXLAN header here, all we have is reserve, reserve uh, field and VXLAN ID. And if we pull up our calculator, hex value of 177A, convert that to decimal. You can see that gets converted to our VXLAN ID, which is 6010. Now, when you go past the VXLAN header, it's just a regular Ethernet frame that was originated from the web server itself on the VMs and this just it looks just like any other ARP frame basically address resolution. So this is the broadcast packet that was carried across by the multicast. So let's clear that and uh, scroll it down, scroll up and then see if we can locate that again. Okay, so we see some ARP of who is. So I guess since we already the ping has already gone once before we start the capture. The ARP has already done. That's why we're not kind of seeing ARP reply in the packet capture here, which is okay. And other than that, we're seeing a ping request and ping reply right here. And if you look at the header, it looks pretty much the same, but instead of the packet being sent to a multicast IPs, it is the unicast packet that goes between the VMs himself, which is a 113.4 and 119.6. Okay, the UDP port is the same, VXLAN header is the same, and then on the inside we got just the regular ICMP packet. And it's also we can also see the inside header under inside the CAN encapsulation that goes between the now uh, two web server 10.0.132 and 10.0.133. And we, you can also see a ping reply there as well. So you can see here the VXLAN does work across layer 3 and the concept is pretty much the same as any other layer 2 uh, extension or data center extension technology when the, where the original packet is encapsulated inside a tunneling protocol. So as far as the, the web server 1 and 2 is concerned, they're virtually connected to the same VLAN regardless of its physical location or network. And I just want to reiterate here, these are, right now what we have here is pretty much a very uh, isolated VLAN. So currently Web 1 and 2 cannot communicate to the outside world. And for that to happen, it requires some sort of VXLAN gateway. And that could be something like a Cisco ASA1000V or a CSR1000V. And basically the gateway is just going to have the inside interface connected to the VXLAN, the same VXLAN as the these servers and the outside interface connected to the regular VLAN and that's how the connectivity is provided from the VXLAN to a traditional VLAN. Okay, so that wraps up our video on Nexus 1000V with VXLAN configuration. Remember you can sign up on our website to receive updates on our latest lab videos and get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmits.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.